Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand CMOS latch up. In the previous clip, we have already seen the diagram of CMOS latch up, how a bipolar transistor, parasitic bipolar transistors are formed. And we said, when we simplified the circuit, we saw that it was nothing but a bistable silicon controlled rectifier, correct? So we have already seen this diagram in the previous clip. Here, let's see what happens due to latch up and how does it exactly happen. Now, due to latch up, there is a low resistance path which is connected between VDD and ground, which leads to catastrophic meltdown, or in simple words, it means that my power wires will melt down because there will be such a huge flow of current which will lead to my power supply or my power wires or my rails to melt. Now, let's see how does this happen. Here, it's nothing but my bistable silicon control rectifier. The simplified diagram from the cross-sectional view of NPN and PNP bipolar transistors occurring inside a CMOS circuit. Now, how does latch-up trigger or how does latch-up takes place? Latch-up takes place when a transient current flows into your substrate. Here, if you see in the cross-sectional view, my substrate is nothing but this, which is a P-type substrate in which I have connected a P-tap which is connected towards ground and on this P-substrate I built up an N-well in which I had an N-tap which was connected towards VDD. Now there are a lot of reasons how latch-up takes place. I will consider one or two. Latch-up takes place when a transient current flows through the substrate when the chip is turned on. That's one of the reasons. We'll see how does that happen. One of the other reasons could be if you apply voltages beyond your normal operating voltages, then too latch up will take place. Let's understand this. So let's consider the first one. When the transient current flows into the substrate when the chip is turned on, that means there is some current in the substrate. This is my substrate terminal, correct? So there is some I sub which is flowing. Initially, this bistable silicon control rectifier both my BJTs were off, so there was nothing which was happening. Now, because of this I sub, which will start due to this transient current when the chip were made to turn on, what's going to happen is initially V sub was equal to zero. So my NPN transistor was off. This is base collector and emitter of an NPN. Now, because I sub has started flowing, we know that V sub is nothing but I sub into R sub, and now I see that I sub has increased which will lead to V sub increase which will eventually turn my transistor NPN transistor on. So NPN transistor turns on because at its base you are applying a positive value because V sub has increased now. So NPN transistor turns on which will lead to a collector current. Let's call that current as I well will start flowing. Now initially what was the value of V well? Let's quickly see that. V well was nothing but this node voltage, right? If this was VDD, it was nothing but VDD minus I well, let's say current going to here would be I well into R well. Initially, I well was zero, so this was nothing but VDD minus zero, which was nothing but VDD. So V well was at VDD, which meant that a higher voltage is applied at the base of PNP transistor, which would keep this transistor off. However, now I well has started flowing and there is some value of I well which is positive, which means that now V well, which is nothing but VDD minus I well R well, because I well is increasing, V well will keep on reducing and at one point of time, this voltage going to the base of PNP will go to a substantial low value to turn on this PNP transistor. So now my PNP transistor turns on which will lead to higher value of current which is nothing but in this case this current is nothing but I sub so I sub increases this I sub increasing will further lead to V sub increasing which is nothing but the base voltage of my NPN transistor and if base voltage is increasing that means my collector current will increase in this case base voltage increasing more forward biasing because emitter is grounded so more forward biasing leads to more current this current is nothing but the collector current which is equal to I well. So I well increases. When I well increases, V well, we have already seen, will further reduce which will lead to I sub 
to increase. This I sub increasing will lead to further increase in V sub and the process goes on. So you see that there is a positive feedback loop which is getting created due to which if my current gain of this transistor is beta 1 and this is beta 2, this is nothing but beta 1 into beta 2 would be greater than or equal to 1 because the current is getting multiplied current gain right that means current value is keeping on increasing due to this positive feedback loop the current one transistor is triggering the other the second one is triggering the first and it's going into a loop where there is a huge amount of current flowing or a row resistance path is connected between my VDD and ground and this huge current will stop when we either power off our circuit or when the power supply rails are burnt or melt away so this is nothing but latch up and if we have to draw current voltage characteristic of an SCR, which we already know now through our lower semesters, it's nothing but something like this, where we see that this is I, this is V, the current will increase by a huge value because of the positive feedback. So latch up leads to a low resistance path, which leads to catastrophic meltdown. Now question is, how do we prevent this latch up? Very interesting. We have already seen that V well, okay, let's go to the previous clip only. Latch up could have been prevented here. Let's presume that R well is a very small value and R sub is also very small. If that would have been the case, let's go back. If this is very, very small, then my V sub would never go on and rise to such a huge value. V sub would stay to a lower value, which will keep my NPN transistor off. Or, of, or if RL would have been a smaller value, then VDD minus a small value would still be equal to VDD, which would keep my V well to a higher value and keep my PNP transistor also in the off case. One method to prevent latch up is to have R well and R sub of minimum value or of lower value. The other technique is to minimize latch up is we can reduce the gain of our BJT because we saw that beta 1 into beta 2 was greater than or equal to 1. So reduce the gain of our BJT and this can be achieved through gold doping of the substrate. Again, we are not going into the details. Gold doping of the substrate. This is another technique. The third one is we need to ensure that, see this all started because there were transient currents flowing in the substrate or the well taps. So we have to ensure that all substrate and well taps are directly connected to the actual supply so that there are no fluctuations or it does not lead to transient currents. Another way of preventing the latch up could be using or first we will go on this point only and elaborate this. Ensure that your substrate and source or your well and your source terminal this is for NMOS are connected to ground this is for PMOS are connected to VDD and they are placed very close to each other because if they are placed very close to each other the value of resistance R well and R sub can be minimized which is nothing but a point A which we have discussed and one very interesting thing is the concept of guard rings in which we use P plus guard rings connected towards ground around the NMOS transistor and N plus guard rings connected to VDD around the PMOS transistor which will also further reduce my R well and R sub. How guard ring, guard ring operates and how does it reduce R well or R sub or how does it reduce latch up? I'm going to cover in the next clip. It's only for your understanding. It's not important from the examination point of view. But I hope you have understood some of the methodologies of how to prevent latch up. We have also understood what happens due to latch up and how it is triggered. Stay tuned for further clips. Thank you very much and take care.